Now again, according to Victor, the, the, the motion has natural motion has has three fundamental ingredients, uh, types of motion. There's orbital motion and rotational motion and what you call circulational motion. And those are easiest, most simply explained in the planetary system or by our Mother Earth because the Mother Earth orbits around the Sun at the same time she rotates about her own axis and at the same time the magnetic energies uh, flow through it. So we have three systems of energy and Victor called this the original motion and in a sense it was the primordial motion but it was also the form originating motion. It was the motion which was responsible for for creating um, physical matter uh, and it um, again this, could, this type of motion could be further subdivided according to him and this is where we come now a bit more to the difference between centrifugal, uh, centrifugal force and, and uh, centripetal force because he had, we'll, we'll go for one, one side first uh, this is what he called axial radial motion and this is a movement where it starts at the center on the axis and moves out towards the outside, towards the radius. So you start in the center and you gradually move out to the outside. And with this form of motion then uh, the friction increases with increasing velocity. So in a system like this in order to keep it rotating you always have to put in more and more and more and more energy. Whereas with the opposite system, and uh, axial, the key words for, for axial radial motion are disintegrating, decelerating, dissipating, destructive, divergent, loosening, friction inducing, and diffuse power is noise. It's not harmonic. Uh, on the other hand, the other system is, is radial axial motion, which means you come in, so to speak, radially or from the outside towards the inside. Uh, towards the central axis and this is the the, um, the process whereby energy is concentrated to to form to create something or to produce power or to produce energy it's the same um, movement obviously as the vortex and the key words for that are consolidating accelerating integrating contracting and the concentrated power is silence now if you all go into the forest there's the most immense creative energy at work but it's extremely quiet all these molecular and atomic interactions all the growth that is happening but it's quiet so that the concentration of energy is creative and I think probably anybody who writes books or composes music or they need to have some silence because otherwise there's no concentration up here once you get to the noise then that's all had it unless you have a, you're very gifted about um, concentrating your thoughts uh, again, this spiral phenomenon uh, is seen in the, in the planetary system. This is actually a movement of all the planets over one, one full cycle of Saturn, so that you can see that even the normal presentation of the planets, where we're shown in, in an atlas as just being a sort of dinner plate-like flat thing with all the planets tucked around it, in fact, it's also a vortex moving through space, so that at no, no point in space do, does the, is the Earth anywhere that it's ever been before and so that all the conditions um, are electromagnetic and other energies, cosmic and so on uh, at any point are always different so that anyone born for instance under those conditions has to by that very token be different from anybody else so that n there can be never uh, any true repetition of, of, of the identical because that would be a waste of energy something which has already been done if nature is an evolutive system then something which has already been done you don't want to do again because you've done it so you only learn something it only evolves by, by, by changing and transforming and I think that one of the problems with our society today is that we try to fix things instead of allowing them to flow it's becoming more flowing than it was but there was tremendous break on, on, on any changing in ideas and so on um, now this energy process, the energetic process um, uh, as we discussed a little earlier is always the interaction between uh, two uh, antithes antitheses so that you have matter and spirit together they make the unity I am, some of me is matter, some of me is spirit and the combination of the, the two are me 
at the same time, quantity times quality is also equal to unity because uh, each of us one here has different quantity but the defining thing between us all is apart from the shape is the quality and so we are the sum total of the multiplication of our quantity times our quality nature doesn't add things she always multiplies things uh, because you cannot add two things together if they're not the same as no two things are identical you can't say there are two of this because there's only one there's only ever one and in the same way there's only ever one in the answer between these things um, because if you take the equation 1 over n times n equals 1, n is any whole number. So 1 over 2 times 2 is equal to 1. Half is times 2 is 1. Uh, 1 over a million times a million is always 1. So you have thesis, antithesis, and the synthesis is, is the unity between them. And on this you can also see all the, the, the ones under red principally are the, the male-oriented ones, uh, which Victor Schauberger uh, uh, claims are the ones once they get too powerful then they are they're responsible for destruction. The blue ones are essentially the, the more female oriented ones and the blue ones have to predominate if evolution is to evolve rather than devolve because if the red side getting up on top um, I, I'll explain this a bit better. You see oxygen as he said uh, was he thought was a lower form of, of sunlight because it was the inseminator. It was that element which um, provoked growth or provoked decay could do one or the other. Now under certain conditions oxygen becomes passive. In water it becomes passive uh, once you have reached a temperature below about 9 degrees centigrade. I think that's about 48 Fahrenheit if I remember rightly. Um, and it becomes bound, the oxygen, dissolved oxygen in the water becomes bound by the hydrogen, the hydrogen um, atoms in it and therefore um, what results from that is a, a uh, firstly a healthy water uh, the regeneration of the water itself the regeneration of life but once and the oxygen is passive but once you get over a certain point then oxygen becomes aggressive and instead of being bound by the hard hydrogen the oxygen binds the hydrogen and it's it's when it gets to that point that uh, disease and old pathogenic bacteria start to evolve so if oxygen as the male force, so to speak, is uppermost, then associated with that is the destruction associated with over maleness or the predominance of male. On the other hand, if, if it's the other way around and oxygen is passive, then the femaleness is predominating. And of course, it's not interesting for women to have war and strife and everything else like that because nothing happens. They are the bearers of the future and we have got to arrive in my view at a world where it is largely um, um, governed by, by, by women I mean men shouldn't be thrown out the door they have a value as well but uh, they shouldn't lead because if we look back in history when, when men have led then there has only been destruction very few cases have there, has there been anything really beneficial for humanity and in terms of oxygen and this particular table then uh, or a pressure expansion, uh, gravity, darkness, um, um, positive energy uh, and um, uh, egoism they're all, on, they're all on this side you know and when they, when they get to, to they, they predominate then all the other finer things really, the things which integrate are all, all, all thrown out or become destroyed.